What is going on guys? We are back to another DSP video and my oh my we got quite the interesting stories coming out of DSP verse. We're gonna start at the beginning of today. DSP still confused about daylight savings. In an other place, Phil I'm pretty certain you're the only person that's confused by DST. And then we have Narkside Phil. DSP's gripe with this is literally him being annoyed his pay pigs may show up late and not tip. While the rest of us normal members of society that actually go outside want it gone because it's fucking depressing getting out of work in the winter and it's already dark. DSP in his chat now. The fact that everyone is confused is exactly why the clock changing needs to stop lol. Adds on, our government has tried to stop it for 20 years and they are so inept they can't do it. And we have this from Miel Blocked. Cat woke him up to kill a moth. That's right. Cat in the middle of the night decided to fight a moth. And she was losing, so she decided to get Phil to fight the moth for her. And by the way, yes, I am a little tired today. Obviously, number one, I've lost an hour of sleep. So I'm already a little slow with this. Like my eyes are starting to burn right now. Like, oh, stupid losing an hour of sleep sucks. But in addition to that, one other final thing. So in the middle of the night, my wife, I guess, noticed that we had a moth flying around the house. It somehow snuck into our house. So I was up at four in the morning chasing a moth around with a, uh, a fly swatter. I took it out. So not only was I, uh, you know, losing an hour of sleep, but also being jarred out of my sleep to kill a moth in the house. Oh, so I'm definitely feeling kind of sluggish, but it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> It seems like every pre-stream that doesn't involve Baldur's Gate 3 is a dud for money wise. It's always one minute man tipping and maybe two or three dollars here or there. But today, there was nothing. Nothing at all. Not even a one minute man tip. Of course, eventually he would tip, but it got Phil very scared. And he wanted to make sure everything was okay with PayPal and everything. So yeah, let's take a look at this. So by the way, guys. I, I, now I just want to ask everyone, you know, it's not that there's an issue with contributions or anything, correct? As long as there's not, I'm okay. You guys are still able to contribute. There's no problems or anything. I just want to be sure that, you know, I, I get paranoid because I have so much trolling against me and bad malicious people acting against me that, you know, look, here we are with a podcast and there's no contributions and I'm like, did everything, did something screw up, right? It's a, maybe, <clears throat> I don't know. I hope not. I hope that nothing's screwed up or anything and everything's working. Shia just popped their 33-month re-up into their membership and said, Happy Mario Day. Thank you to Shia for supporting the channel. I really appreciate that. And then Phil wants to be Mr. Engagement. Phil complains that no one is commenting on his videos. First off, Phil, all the comments are always held for review. Which means, if you don't like them, if they're not positive, suck in your butt, as you say, you will not post them. That just leaves your true fans, which are dwindling by the day. So we have Kramer the second here. Phil doesn't understand why he doesn't get comments on his videos. So he proceeds to beg for comments. Begging for comments. How did we get here, Phil? It's pretty simple, he refused to acknowledge the reasons why. Then a standard video on the channel, but almost no comments. I really wish people would comment more on my content. I'm just being honest now. I, I really feel like people are like afraid to comment for some reason. I don't know why, because all the comments are uh, YouTube controlled. Meaning if you comment, your comment will go into a queue. If it's a troll commenting and they say a bunch of nasty stuff, YouTube auto deletes it. So it never even makes it to the video. All your nice comments I see and I approve and add to the video. So basically the comment section is actually nice now um, and no one can really do anything about it because some people are like, well, you're going to get harassed. How exactly? There's no DM system on YouTube. No one can DM you and harass you for commenting on a video. It doesn't exist. So I don't even know what you're talking about. Like, I don't, I don't understand that mentality. It used to be, oh, if I comment on a video, trolls will attack the comment with bad responses and then they'll DM me on YouTube. None of that exists at all. So with a video like this, I absolutely would love feedback and comments. I would like, hey, did you like this? Um, you know, what do you think? Please comment on content if you can. 
um, it helps a lot. It does, and I would love that engagement. And again, I control that so you don't have to worry about, oh, there's going to be people harassing me in the comment section. No, they're not. They can't do that, okay? Um, anyway, please consider commenting on the content, especially on that channel. That channel, you know, has a very positive engagement, and just more comments would help that channel a lot. Um, a lot of people are just realizing it exists. Like, I'm starting to see people come to the channel and, and say, oh, my God, Phil's still around, and here's him, you know, reminiscing about the old days when I used to watch him. This is an awesome channel, right? Uh, so anyway, DSP Throwback is doing pretty good. Is it doing amazingly well? No, because it's really for... Then we have this from Gout Gout. Of course, DSP has the trash Mario movie again, and he wonders why no one supports Nintendo games for him. Yeah, he'll constantly trash Nintendo, Nintendo games, Nintendo fanboys. And then when he goes to do a playthrough of, let's say, Mario Wonder. Guys, why is there no one here? Guys, why are you not supporting me? Don't you like the game? Like, this is cool. This is Mario. Don't you like it? No, Phil, you trained them to hate Nintendo and hate Mario and hate all these things. First movie was kind of all over the place. First, you're in the Mushroom Kingdom, but then all of a sudden the Kongs are involved, but now we're driving in Mario Kart. Like, what is going on in this movie? It's so... I feel like the first movie, they just wanted to take a paintbrush and just go everywhere with it, splattering Nintendo, you know, culture everywhere, but I don't feel like it made it a coherent whole. It felt more like a chaotic mess, and it's a beautiful mess, and it, sometimes it's a fun mess, but it's still kind of a mess. Like, by the end of the movie, I was just kind of shaking my head like... I really wish that they had made a better lore and better story rather than just making it a big action romp with good visuals. It's a fine movie for kids, but for me, I was bored. Like halfway through the movie, I was super bored and I was like, man, I would have liked more lore. I would have liked a more coherent world, not just mishmash everything together and make it look pretty, which is really what they did. So maybe that's what they're aiming for for the sequel. Maybe this is what Miyamoto is getting out, getting apart, saying, oh, we're gonna broaden Mario's world further. So it sounds like they kind of understand that what they did is they just kind of made chaotic mess. Now they actually want to make, like what I'm thinking, why not bring in care, actual more characters and more plot lines from the Mario games over the years, right? Like introduce Yoshi or perhaps go into the Super Mario Galaxy lore, which is weird because one of the characters, Luma, is in the movie and has nothing to do with Mario Galaxy. It's just a weirdo character there for like comic relief and it makes no sense. I feel like that was a lot of the problems with the Mario movie, the first one. There was the presence of characters, but they were there just to be there and they made no sense, right? So, you know, like imagine having a cartoon mashup of all your favorite cartoon characters. And they're all in it, but none of them really are representative of who they are in their own universes, nor does it make sense that they're all together. Like, what is this, right? It's just a weird mess. That's what it felt like for me. So, um... Anyway, um, this is interesting, and he announced that basically their, their target for the release of the movie is April 3rd, 2026, okay? So two years. In two years' time, the Mario sequel will release, okay? So that's exciting, I guess. <laughs> for those who liked the first Mario movie, I'm sure you're stoked. For me, it's kind of- I love how DSP thinks the Mario movie was a huge flop, didn't make any money, despite the exact opposite. Of course, DSP is in the mind frame of- if I don't like it, that means no one liked it. And the fact that it made so much money, everybody loved it, critics loved it, fans loved it. But Phil saying it was a failure. They need to add more lore. That's right. Phil Burnell, Dark Side Phil, wants more lore in the Mario movie. So the pre-stream ended at $27, with 25 of that coming from One Minute Man, of course. So DSP starts off, DSP reacts with a bag here. Any support during this stream is greatly appreciated. This channel is only profitable because of stream submissions and stream support. Uh, the videos that we're gonna do today and make, sadly, really cannot be monetized too often. Many times they get claimed or demonetized because I'm watching someone else's content. So really it is the stream support that keeps this channel going. Please consider supporting the stream in some way today, whether it be a super chat, a membership, a gifted membership, or a tip. All of that is greatly appreciated, okay? Now tonight we will do the DSP versus minimum wage to see how he did. But we're also going to look at DSP reacts for 2024 so far and my god it's really really sad. So the name Darkside Phil and Geography do not go well together as we saw in his bully playthrough. And it seems like he hasn't learned a damn thing. So we have this from a next gen guy. Phil thinks New Zealand is Singapore. Looking at the performance of Oh, here the we top are. Five Denmark, Finland, 
New Zealand, Norway, and Singapore. What? Uh, what the? Three of them are right next to each other. And likely you would think they're probably similar in governmental structure. New Is that New Zealand down there? I don't know where... Which one is the one that's, um, that's way apart from everything? Because Singapore is the bottom right, correct? So then, what is, I, I don't, I'm horrible at geography. People are going to make fun of me now. And it only got worse from there. Phil discovers New Zealand and completely missed the Hong Kong pro-democracy movement and thinks Hong Kong is still free and Norway are near each other, correct? So the one over there to the right, but not all the way to the right is New Zealand. Okay, I, didn't, I had no clue New Zealand was there. I'm serious, I had no idea. I had no idea where it was at all. This is the first time I even seen it on a map. New Zealand is the one that's off of the coast of Australia. So Singapore is the one near mainland Asia. And then New Zealand is way off there off the coast of Australia. Okay, I didn't even know that. I had no idea. Okay. <clears throat> um, I wonder why those particular countries are rated so low in corruption. I'd be fascinated to study that. Countries globally. Denmark. Well, it ranks the top, followed by Finland, hmm. then New Zealand, and Norway with Singapore in fifth position there. And when compared with other territories in the region, Singapore maintained its position at the top of the index, followed closely by Hong Kong and then Japan. Hong Kong is still independent, correct? They're not part of China, they're independent do their own thing. Uh, in his report, Transparency International says that it's noticed a trend of weakening justice systems worldwide. Mm. It adds that the decreasing accountability for public officials has allowed for corruption to thrive. Yeah, I mean, you can be a public official, you can make a bunch of you know, awful decisions, choices. You could do all kinds of messed up stuff uh, and get away with it, basically. So at this point, he's now at $3 for the entire stream of DSP versus the internet. And the begging was off the chart. Absolutely crazy. We have in an otter place. Jesus, another DSP bag and reminder, there's only an hour left to contribute. This is less than two minutes after the last one. Hey, Bronze Monk says, I prefer tipping on PayPal. I don't want to give YouTube money. That's your prerogative. You know, there's so many ways you can contribute to support. There's Patreon, patreon.com forward slash darksidephil. There's the live stream contributions like super chats, memberships, tip. It's all good. You know, thank you to anyone who has contributed today. <clears throat> We're now into the final hour. Okay. All right. And then DSP watched a video about job applications and companies that help you find a job and his chat went all over him because he hasn't applied for a job in over 16 years and then he went on a rant saying how he knows how it is you're full of shit he knows better than you and this is the comment that set him off from jesse wolf you don't know any of this you haven't been employed for decades and part of the rant was dsp telling people to get outside of their bubble and get into reality we have Gamer Face Gaming, from blowing bubbles for likes to living in a giant bubble, but please never let my bubble burst. I'm so happy living inside it. Now guys. Any idiot trolls in the chat saying that because I haven't personally applied for a job in the last 15 years, I don't know what I'm talking about. Fuck you. I know exactly what I'm talking about. Just because I haven't personally done it doesn't mean I don't have experience and knowledge of it. You're a moron, right? Really, you're a fucking moron. It's like saying, because you never cooked a gourmet meal, you don't know anything about the meal at all. You know, you couldn't have possibly looked into it or researched it online or know people who've been through that. You're an idiot. Fuck off. Yeah, Cypress TV, 
I, I mean, they, they are incredibly dumb. You don't have to. It, it's true how dumb these people are. As you know, I live in a bubble, right? I live in a bubble. I have no interactions with any other humans on the planet. So if personally, I haven't been through something. There's no way I could possibly have outside knowledge of anything on Earth, correct? That's how these people think. They're actually that much of a simpleton brain. <laughs> what do they call them? The smooth brain, I believe? <laughs> That's how these people are. Okay. Uh, by the way, last chance to contribute to the stream if you could. It would be great if you could. Literally, we had one tip all stream and nothing else. So anything in this last part would be appreciated, whether it be uh, a super chat, membership, gifted membership, or tip. All would be appreciated. Okay? All right, here we go. It's very weird that he compares a job application to eating at a gourmet restaurant. Of course, food is all Phil loves. And the only human, and I use that in quotes, that you interact with is your wife, who's a horse. So you hear the stories about her at work and this or that. She's probably out back with Tyrone. When DSP was not done trashing Nintendo, he decides to trash Donkey Kong. We have Bob here. The amount of barrels Donkey Kong had was totally unrealistic. It's just immersion breaking trash. This game sucks, dude. What the fuck? This is over. This is nonsense. You suck, dude. You fucking suck. You literally just stood there and did safe kick. Safe kick. Safe kick. Safe kick. You're so good because everything you do is safe. This is... I just don't want to play the game anymore now. Get to this level. Everything they do is a safe spam move online. You didn't fucking do anything. You did the same safe move 4,000 fucking times, you asshole. Of course, this is a parody video. That's him getting his butt kicked at Tekken over top of Donkey Kong. Still hilarious, though. And we got this, a mind-blowing moment for DSP. At almost 42, Phil realizes maybe he should actually listen to the lyrics of songs he's listening to. Considering he just figured that out, might have a darker meaning than he thinks. Wow, snort. Then we have this from Meow Blocked. I've been trying to think of a caption, but this is so insane. I'm just sitting here silently. So here you go. Right? When I can't, because I can't do it every day. Some days, I'm so slammed, I'm so stressed, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing I can do about that. That's life, right? So not every day can I instantly be doing things and changing every day for the better. Like, for example, the suggestion to put these filters on the mic has been for like two weeks. People have been like, hey, you're going to do it? You're thinking about doing it? And I'm like, oh, I'm too busy, I'm too stressed, I can't do it, I can't do it. And then finally I get around to doing it, people are like, oh, it sounds better. Oh, well, maybe I should have done this five years ago years ago right <laughs> right uh <clears throat> so that video right there tells you how lazy he is oh i can't do it i'm so stressed blah 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 things i should have done 15 years ago and you wonder why you're in the position you are today phil so dsp reacted to a video where a guy called the cops on mcdonald's because his fries were too cold and you know where this is going he brings up burger king why are you calling the cops Let's about a McDonald's Let's order? Outside. outside of here. This, this would have been like the equivalent of me. Now, I've told you about my infamous, which because idiots on the internet made it infamous. My infamous uh, chicken, what was it called? The Chicken King sandwich or something at Burger King, where I went there one day with my wife. We didn't want to go there, but our first plans for eating fell through. So we went and got burger. This is during the pandemic. So we went and got Burger King at the drive-thru. And when I went to eat it in the car, it was such a disgusting mess. There was no way to eat it. It was soaked, absolutely saturated in sauce. There was nowhere to even touch it to eat it. Um, and so I was like, I can't eat this. It's inedible. I'm going to get rid of it. But I want to complain. That would have been like, instead of me going online and complaining, like via their service that, you know, that I did, which was like, I think it was email or something. I called the police and had the police come and say, look at this sandwich they gave me. Right? Like, what? Why? Huh? That's not what the police are for. Now keep in mind, this is the same guy who refused to call the cops when his identity was stolen. And we have this here. Phil Pig explains, if you are wanted or suspect you are wanted for something, hide. Keep a low profile and don't call the cops over cold Mickey D's 
just like he told Kirk to ban Evade by creating another account and don't tell anyone who you are. And we've gotten to the point now, Scrub Quotes is now quoting Poem's future in DSP. That's right, they have so much DSP lore now and knowledge of who he is that they're just openly quoting detractors now. What the fuck? This is over. This is nonsense. You suck, dude. You fucking suck. You literally just stood there and did safe kick, safe kick, safe kick, safe kick. You're so good because everything you do is safe. This is. I'm just don't want to play the game anymore now. Get to this level. Everything they do is a safe spam move online. You didn't fucking do anything. You did the same safe move four thousand fucking times. You asshole. So hope you guys like that. Click that like. Share the video. Leave a comment below. Hit subscribe. Subscribe my other channels on the details or the end cards. And as always, hope you're all safe, healthy, and happy. I love each and every one of you. Peace and love.